So I'm generally take away like any of those laws, it creates that consistency and a strong privacy focus. There's so much rising cyber threat, so the need becomes very important. And because there's always evolution of changes, emerging technology, constant risk concern, constant privacy concern, AI is a big one right now. Remote workforce is a big one. AI agents are big one. So there's so much going on that would mandate us to implement additional ever-evolving privacy guidelines. So that's really the gist around PIPEDA. I would add the GDPR real quick. For those of us that were here yesterday, um, the slide I had yesterday was for the internship. So this is for this class. So I'll just quickly go through it. Then we do a quick quiz. Then we do the assessment side of work. But I would assume some people were not in the class yesterday, so I don't want to assume everybody was in that class, so I'll still talk about it real quick. Okay. GDPR. So we're looking and saying to ourselves that, okay, we're talking about the General Data Protection Regulation. It was implemented 2018. The better was 2020, right? And, you know, we're talking about a potential 411 billion are now economic impact, impact, and it's probably growing every time. So it's significant a lot. It has a global reach. It applies to all websites attracting European Union visitor, regardless of the location. You know, it's comprehensive. It empowers individuals. It has some guidelines around the way we process data, inclusive of collection, the storage, the use of those data. The key rights under GDPR, how do we consent and access, correction and erasure, the right to fix inaccurate information, then control and portability. So you can object to processing and profiling, you know, at any point in time. So it gives you some control if you choose to. What about the organizational responsibility? So you need to be transparent in terms of what you are using the data for, how it's been processed, stored. If there was a breach within the EU space, you need to notify in 72 hours. There must be an element of privacy by design. If you notice, for those of us that were in the internship yesterday, we kept saying privacy by design. It is so foundational because as you're building any solution, you must upfront consider the privacy implication. Gone are the days people build anything and they're not thinking of, even inclusive of the recent AI model, a lot of people are building light language model internal for their business. But privacy by design is part of, you must do it. You must implement it because you might have the funds, the money to do anything, but if you violate privacy and it becomes a reputational risk, then that could be equivalent of billions of dollars in terms of loss. It's a big deal, right? So because of that, people take it very serious. It's serious, right? Then ultimately, documentation also. You have to make sure you maintain record of all your data processing activities in general. It has a global ripple effect all over the world. Um, if you notice, that's the beautiful thing I've seen as a trend line. A lot of times, if you have a good framework policy guideline, it trickles down and other nation, economic law, states start adopting it. So GDPR, CCPA is a spin-off from GDPR, in my opinion, because you see some similarity already. The concept of privacy by design is also a big thing, you know, from your architectural design upfront or system architectural design. The design from your privacy is also inclusive. Then, of course, market growth, you know, the adoption, people, there's no solution I've seen out there that is dealing with compliance in the cyberspace that would not tell you they have something around GDPR. It's almost impossible not to, because you understand some, even if you don't have direct clients in European Union, some of your clients in North America, in Canada and US probably do. So because of that, to get them comfortable, you would always quickly cater for that need ahead of time. The security concern in generally, of course, we have to think about the technical side of it, encryption, access control, 
Um, let me let me quickly sneak this in. If you don't mind, can we type this real quick, everybody? Anytime you hear the word technical control, in your mind, I want you to just think of access control, then encryption. Can we all type that real quick? It's a common trend I've seen. You just remember, oh, access control and encryption, they're always, when you see technical safeguard, because really, if you're thinking of privacy, in your mind, you're saying, okay, how do you have access to my data? And when you send those data, what is the encryption around it? Those are the common big ones out there. All right, risk-based approach. Like anything else, sometimes, no matter how much funds you have as a business, you're safer to focus on the risk area, high risk area, right, or critical risk, you know. Then, in general, how do we measure the organization metrics in terms of employee training, the security and essentials in general, you know, so, which is a big deal. Um, look at the statistics here. Strong cyber saves organization 3.8 million on average by preventing breach. So that's not a bad amount to save daily or yearly. Now, implementation of challenges and solution, data mapping, how is your data flowing, very important. So if I provide my data to you, it's fair to say I want to know how is the data flowing end to end? Is it going through the border? If I'm based in Toronto, Canada, or Calgary, how is my data being transferred to back and forth. Do I have folks that are in California, folks in Edmonton, folks in British Columbia, folks in New York, folks in Ireland, UK? So now you're thinking, okay, now I'm crossing the line across the borderline. What are the regulations that I need to also consider? Then we have to think about the impact assessment, the vendor management, because we are thinking of if I can't control myself, but I can't control my vendor, then it's still a problem. So what is the future of data protection? So 87% prefer a privacy conscious brand. So it's good for business. Any business you know that they are open to protect your data, consumers tend to make them their first choice. You know, the growth is exponential, the technology side and investment in privacy technology is about $150 billion projected in 2025. And in general, we have over 40 plus global laws around privacy right now. And a lot of them piggyback around GDPR that has been established 2018. So that's a good thing. All right, so that's a quick high level summary. So now let's jump to, I'll quickly take a quiz to kind of juggle your brain then we will jump into the assessment side of it. 